Thanks for joining me, Bastish B, for Import City, a look at the world of 80s and 90s Japanese gaming. In particular, we're going to check out Japan exclusive games and English fan translations, and show some really fun stuff that require no Japanese to enjoy. If you like the Famicom, Super Famicom, Mega Drive, Mega CD, Saturn, and PSX, then this may be for you. So now let's check out today's two games. And today's two games are based on the popular anime series Macross or Robotech to Western audiences. We'll be looking at 1993's Super Dimension Fortress Macross Scramble Valkyrie on the Super Famicom and Super Dimension Fortress Macross Do You Remember Love on the Sega Saturn released in 1997. Both games are Japan exclusives that were never released in the West. Scramble Valkyrie was released on the Super Famicom at the end of 1993, published by Banpresto. The game is a traditional horizontal shooter, taking place after the events of Macross, Do You Remember Love, the movie, and the video game we'll be looking at next. The story in the game is almost non-existent though, but all the text is in English despite it being a Japan-only release. The game has seven huge stages that comprise of mid and end bosses. This game is tough, and it's not for rookies of the genre based on three simple facts. One, you only get one laugh. You do have an energy bar that can take a few hits, but then you're done for. Two, the bosses are brutal bullet sponges that take a lot to take down. And three, my personal pet peeve is if you die, it's all the way back to the beginning of a stage. There are no checkpoints. Hence, this is a tough game. In the beginning, you can choose between three characters from the series, with Hikaru, who's Rick Hunter in the West, Max and Milia. Each have their own set of three different weapons that can be upgraded three times and are activated by transforming your fighter to a different form, just like in the anime series. Each character's weapon set is unique, but if you want the easiest route through this game, I'd suggest using Max and upgrading his homing missile spread shot. Once it's up to about level 3, you become almost invincible. Well, except for those dodgy bosses, of course. On top of all that, all three characters also get the special Minmay cannon, named after the pop star in the series and Rick's girlfriend. What you do is don't shoot for a few seconds and it charges up your ship until it glows. Then you touch any bad guy and they instantly become your ally. Shooting and ramming enemies, it's a really cool technique. Most levels are of the traditional design with a few fast scrolling dodge and survive segments and most bosses do have at least two parts to them before they die. The graphics in the game are very impressive. There's a massive amount of parallax scrolling and those bosses are really huge on screen and fast. The game like most Super Famicom shooters though does suffer from slowdown when the screen starts to get a bit hectic but it's not game breaking in any way and the visual variety in all the levels is really impressive. The music though is the highlight for me. Made up of original tunes and remix themes from the show. They are all outstanding and definitely take a listen to it separately as sometimes the sound effects can make these tracks be a bit lost. Overall as a Macross fan this is very cool and even if you're not it's an enjoyable shooter. It is tough though and only recommended for people that are up for a stiff challenge because getting to the end is going to push your skills and patience to the absolute limit. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message.
Macross, Do You Remember Love, hit the Sega Saturn in 1997, another 2D shoot 'em up based on the 1984 anime movie. It was released to coincide with the 15th anniversary of the series. Unlike Scrambled Valkyrie, this game is 100% in Japanese, including all the anime cutscenes and radio chatter. If you're unfamiliar with the series, it's gonna make absolutely no sense. But if you are, this game is epic nostalgia bait. You get to play Hikaru, aka Rick, as you go through all the most iconic battles in the series. You get to select your weapons loadout in the beginning with a variation on all three weapons and the ability to transform your ship as well depending on the situation. For the most part it's a horizontal shooter but there are a few vertical and forced speed stages to add a little bit of variety. You have lock on missiles, regular fire and bombs all pretty typical for this genre. Story is a big element here with action being peppered with radio chatter and anime cutscenes from the show with a few extras made specifically for this game. Gameplay is pretty basic. It's definitely not as nuanced as Valkyrie. Overall it's very straightforward but also has the start you from the beginning of the level trope if you die but the game is nowhere near as difficult and I would class it as a real entry level shooter. The graphics are a real strange mix of multiple styles, 90s CGI, traditional animation and lots of digitized images. It's like they pretty much used everything that was available at the time. It gives the game overall a very strange look. It's very chunky and rough. The music score however again is absolutely fantastic. It's fully orchestrated macros music with rock and jazz stylings and the anime cutscenes are awesome with tons of complimentary sound effects from the show to trigger that nostalgia. Is it worth recommending though? This really depends on whether you're a macros fan like myself. For me it's a real trip although there is no denying that the gameplay is extremely shallow. For everyone else if you're looking for an easy shooter on a lazy Sunday afternoon by all means but the rest of you will probably find it way too simplistic to sustain your attention for the entire game.